Wesley. <laughs> Yesley. Ooh, Yesley from Wesley. I like it. <laughs> great, man. That's great. Oh, God. I, every, every day, every day, I feel like we're just getting back from Max. <laughs> Why is it? it? Feels, yep. No, I've. I feel that. Um, I feel like I skipped a day yesterday because I was just so out of it. Like I, I, I would crash for a while and then get up and try to do a couple of things, and the next thing you know, I'm crashing again, and then uh, all of a sudden it's it's West Day. So, it's West. yeah, West Day is the best day. Indeed, best. not the best, the best. It's the best. The best. Meta is beta. <laughs> I caught that. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Meta is beta. Meta is beta. Just phonetically. Uh, okay, let's. <laughs> this is so dumb already. Let's <laughs> let's start this thing. Let's go. I feel like I can't introduce the show if you're not here. Um, hold on a second. Am I not here? I mean, you're here, but I... for some reason you're not showing. Uh, you know, <laughs> we really welcome need a producer back, on this Brian. show. Well, welcome home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 we found you. Okay, let's let let's hope this is it. This is PSVR Games Cast Live, where we film live every single Monday, Wednesday, and Two Eyes Friday, right here on YouTube. We do a live 6 p.m. Eastern for your viewing pleasure. But we also care about your oral pleasure. That's why our good friend Rypop uploads this to podcast services of your choice. And because a lot of you are just listening, I'm going to speak an octave lower than I usually speak just because it's more relaxing. And if you're driving, well, actually, that's horrible. We don't want you driving into oncoming traffic because I'm putting you to sleep. My name is Brian Paul from this channel right here, PSVR Without Parole. And this gentleman over here to my left, you're right. It's Wes Dillon from Virtual Strangers. What is happening? Wes Lee Besley. So What's up, man? Doing well. I don't know. Just kind of getting back in the swing of things, uh, getting back to work, getting back to life. Um, it went too quickly, didn't it? Like we were there for over half of a week or about half of a week. And uh, it seemed like it just was gone before it started, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely did. Um, you know, it was it, the first day was so kind of casual and laid back and just sort of i didn't even head down the packs so i went to you know just we hung out and i got to know everybody started you know meeting people from pretty much the minute i got there until the end of the night and it felt it felt like we had all the time in the world and then the next thing you know it's like oh time to go it's like oh shit that was that was fucking real fast um yeah we were gone we were only we were only there for like three or four days uh and i feel like it's gonna take me about three or four weeks to get back to um normal routine right. it doesn't make any sense at all Right. It was like, it's like we got there and we did get started early, like uh, pretty much immediately we stepped off the plane and started congregating in the hotel lobby. Uh, shout out Hampton, Boston Crosstown, by the way, for being awesome. Um, but uh, like we got there, we hung out in the lobby pretty much the whole time. Um, Thursday over pretty quickly. Friday was an awesome, epic day. Uh, and Friday, the attitude's like... You know, we've still got Saturday, but then Saturday comes around and it's like, I got to fly early tomorrow. Um, and everybody kind of got up late Saturday and got started late. And, uh, and then we stayed up late again. I got a small nap in before we uh, got back on the flight. But uh, yeah, like I said, before you know it, it's gone. And uh, now we have next year to um, to look forward to. But I'll say this about this year and then by proxy next year. Um, first of all, I didn't know just how fucking cold Boston is. The wind will cut you like a knife to the point where I, I packed all these cool t-shirts and all these cool clothes. I brought stuff to fix my hair so I could look nice. I stayed in my hoodie and my hat the whole time I was there because it was just so fucking cold all the time. Yep. But with that said, next year's packs, it's in May. It's in May. Brian. Right, we should. It's in May. We didn't know the dates of this year's packs until I feel like like four months beforehand or five months beforehand. Like we were really speculating, uh, and as it turns out, 
like this PAX barely ended and uh, and then the PAX team tweeted the dates of next year's PAX. It's in May. Uh, so yeah. buy your tickets now. <laughs> like or buy buy your hotel rooms now. Like it, it's time it's really time to uh, to start planning way ahead for these things. We get so lucky because we barely did any real planning, like any of the day to day planning saying this is gonna happen at this time, this is gonna happen at this time. We sort of just figured it out, flew by the seat of our pants as we do so well. And it worked out perfectly. Like, I don't think it could have worked out any better. However, we got really fucking lucky. Like everything just worked out next, next year. I'd, I'd be, I'd be nervous if we weren't a little bit more prepared, uh, and had some, uh, better plans in the works, uh, and, and ho you know, again, hopefully be able to do a games cast. Dude, I went to some panels that were, there were like 10 people there. Like wow. we easily could have had three times that amount for a games cast live, uh, official you know, uh, episode from PAX. By the way, trying to download the footage I have um, of our of our Gamescast Live, I uploaded to Google Drive last night uh, from my laptop, tried to download it to my PC today, and it's just like, it's there. It just doesn't want to download. Uh, so I'm going to figure that out. Mm. But trust me, if people are asking, like, where's where's the PAX footage? Where's that Gamescast that we missed? Like, where is it? And it's, it's all happening. But I'm trying to do, like, you know, like an overdark review and, uh, you know, normal... Uh, normal stuff uh, and get the pack stuff done and figure out why things aren't working. So please be patient. I promise you there will be cool stuff soon. Um, the lost episode, all, all of the news is going to be irrelevant by the time it gets up. Oh, yeah. um, but, but that's okay because it was such a cool atmosphere and such a cool episode. And I feel like this is the best chance for us to kind of convey to people what it was like to be there was this episode. So, uh, whenever it's up, whether it be about this weekend or next week sometime, uh, be sure that you check it out because it was really cool to do. And, uh, I look forward to the next time that we're able to do it. Yep. It all, it all kind of felt like a dream, to be honest. Um, you know, while we were there, I was trying to be in the moment and, you know, at one point, uh, was it, was it US or was it, was it miles that I just kind of like tapped on the shoulder and was like, this doesn't fucking even feel real yet. This hasn't really set in. Um, it, it, and now and now we're home and i was like it still hasn't set in so i'm glad there's footage to prove that we were there <laughs> <laughs> and by the way dan's in the uh dan's in the chat already trying to move us out of hampton inn for next year he says we need to go to the battery wharf hotel see dan, dan stuck around in boston for like two or three extra days and now he thinks he's a native now he's like, I know, I know everything, dude. We got, we couldn't have been more lucky with that hotel. Um, and the fact that they actually had a shuttle that brought us down the packs, like you didn't really have to Uber all that much. Like, I mean, it was crazy convenient. Um, and I think it was actually good being away from sort of the rest of the packs crowd. You know, we got we get out of there. Right. It was, it was nice because uh, it, it wasn't like I, dude, I didn't see like a ton of people coming and going from to packs from our apartment, apartment hotel no there was a few the there was a few but there weren't many i, I think what we, where we looked out the most other than just the layout of the place which was absolutely perfect for the uh size crowd that we brought in this year um i think we looked out because the staff that works there at night just didn't want to tell us no so we literally just had our way with the place no one ever <laughs> said a word except it's a weird way to put it we, we just had our way with the place I love it. Well, I mean, we did. We were going into rooms that we tried to rent but couldn't afford and just using them. <laughs> uh, we literally commandeered the, the lobby for the entire time that we were there from pretty much breakfast on with some small gaps. Uh, we always had a crowd down there. And um, they never they never told us to be quiet. Uh, they told us we could drink, which was amazing. Like, we walked to the liquor store and brought back hundreds of dollars worth of booze and consumed it right there in the lobby. And um, they never said a word except uh, if you were to leave your phone on the table. Uh, apparently, that's very dangerous because we got called down many times for doing this. Yeah, the security guards did not like when we left phones on the table and walked away from them, even if there were like lots of people around, which is like, you know, whatever. Yeah. They, they have their things. So we, we had to follow very simple rules in order to take that place over. It, you, know what I, you know what I love, Wes, is that people tuning in for every episode of Gamescast this week is get we get kind of get a debrief from AJ, and then we're getting now it's Wednesday we're getting a debrief <laughs> from right. you, and then if, on Friday we're gonna talk about it because I dude I really haven't even talked to Miles to be honest like my Miles got home and you know I haven't even been like welcome home I haven't even had a chance to like send him a text and be like dude that was a lot of fun blah 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 I feel like we're it's probably not gonna happen until we start Gamescast on Friday, and so you guys are just uh, legit here 
watching us get caught up with each other. Um, right. And Wes, you're like the fucking the most consummate professional there is. Like you, <laughs> I think it was the day after I got back from PAX. So we get back, I think on Sunday, sirens on my end. And Monday I wake up and you know, you sent me a message about like overdark keys going out or something like that. You're like, it's just our, back in our normal routine. You're like back and being like, Hey, uh, this is VR stuff you need to know. And I need to know. And just, we just get right back to it. Didn't even say, Hey, welcome home. Yep. Nothing. We just fucking went back to work. Back to life, back to reality. Uh, you know, you say we're debriefing here, and that, that's very much true. Uh, and I imagine that what we're saying is very similar to what was said on Monday. Uh, tune in Friday, because I, I have to imagine that Miles' account is going to be very different than mine and AJ. Because that guy, he wasn't hanging out in the hotel lobby while we were. He was on the ground, talking to people, kissing babies, shaking hands. And, uh, man, that guy just never took a moment that he was just going the whole time. Nope. Nope. I was trying to, I, my, my whole thing about PAX was being there for the game cat meetup. Um, but it, it, and you know, I guess, I guess maybe something happens right in your brain where you like say, Hey, I'm flying overseas. Uh, and so I got to make the most of this. Like, this is not a, an inexpensive trip. This is not a trip I can make very often. And so like, while I'm there, I got to make the most of it. Um, but I also think it's just straight up how Miles's brain works, period, right? Always making the most of every minute, every, every encounter, uh, developing relationships, uh, and all that stuff. So, uh, I was thoroughly impressed. Uh, I told the guy like three times to send me his resume just because I was so impressed with how he was conducting himself in Boston. Uh, yeah, he has ambition. I like it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I hope, I hope when Miles, uh, lands, Clearly, he's going to, you know, get get a great job and uh, and do something great um, outside of Gamescast Live. Uh, but it, I hope it's in the VR industry because um, you know, normally I'd be like, well, I hope it's not in the VR industry because I don't want to have like these conflict of interest with you on Gamescast. But man, he's what what he's doing is so great, and that you know, I think VR really needs him. So yeah, hopefully it all Word. works out. Word. Word. Uh, Kill Artist One, the Dreamweaver Game Cat with the two dollar tip says, "Hey Wes and Brian, fun times at PAX, indeed." Uh, again, if guys, if you don't follow me on Twitter, make sure you do at Parole PSVR and uh, see the amazing artwork that Kill Artist presented to the crew. Do you? Oh, do you have your? I thought I, I've got. I've already got it in a frame, but I don't see exactly where it's at. You already but, get yours uh, framed. I'm I'm scared to take mine out because I've got the original, and like so, I don't even want right. to take it out until I. I just want to bring it down to a framing place in its protective. Uh, canister and say i don't even want to touch this you guys do it well it just so happened that i just had ordered a frame right before i flew out uh, for this awesome poster that um punctronic lab sent me autograph poster for light brigade so it just had come in for that and then when i got back from bat boston luckily it's the perfect size for the uh the, the print that uh kill artist gave me which by the way if you all haven't seen it yet check it out it's on discord i think um it's amazing he's very talented and i'm very grateful uh to have him i'm, I'm immortalized in uh in lead and paper yeah man i'm honored and anyone spending that much time on like what's technically fan art like i i feel like fan art brings it down to like a lower level than it is right like it's a masterpiece um you know that's beautiful subject matter be damned it's a masterpiece <laughs> um I want to talk to Samson, 143VR, with a $2 tip. Uh, it says, already looking forward to next year. I, I mean, I, I hope we do make this into a, a yearly thing. Like, you know, we'd, we talked a lot about when, you know, where the next one would be, um, you know, considering going to another country, which would be insane, um, you know, or uh, heading down to Atlanta uh, to, see, to be closer to AJ. But I think, you know, the fact is we have this, uh, we have this awesome convention that's for the fans, uh, and, um, you know, it's something to kind of base the whole thing around. I'm not saying we have to do it at PAX East every year, but God damn, is it convenient for me? <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be no, pushing good. for. Since it's in May, if it were in like March again next year, I'd be like, oh, Brian, we don't need to do PAX every year, but <laughs> since it's in May, sure. Yep. Why not? Uh, Nihilus Ryan, the game feline, rare with the five dollar tip says, Feels great to be able to put faces to all these names in the chat now, and the games keep coming. Yeah, oh, uh, 
I told you guys on Monday show that Nihilus Ryan recommended Brain Scan to me with Eddie Furlong, and I and I watched it. And I was like, wow, this fucking this is good, man. I really enjoyed this shit. Um, and then uh, another one he had recommended. He was like, he's like, oh, you've seen Strange Days, right? And I was like, yeah, I I, I know that I have, you know, it's, it's but but I couldn't quite put it all together in my brain. So I fucking watched Strange Days again, again based on Nihilus Ryan's recommendation, and it's such a good movie, but it has the worst it's a very personal issue with me sometimes i just can't separate actors from the roles that they're playing and so all of the actors in that movie are just like so clearly not supposed to be there right these are actors from other movies and tv shows and shit that i know and it's just distracting the whole time um and uh, so it's a great story and i think it's really well done i just wish all the actors were different and it really bothers me um so strange days if you don't have my brain, I recommend it. <laughs> well, yeah, just... it's a uh... sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was just going to agree with you. Str Strange Days is pretty cool. Uh, brain Scan was one of my favorites back in the day. Probably been two decades since I watched either of those movies, but uh, I do remember them fondly. Trick. See the character. We're just going to talk about Brain Scan for the rest of the show. The um, which <laughs> if you guys don't know what you're in for by now, when you tune into Gamescast, you should know. Um, the character Trickster in Brainscan feels to me like such a uh, like su uh, such a product of its time, where you know everybody wanted to have this iconic character in their movies, like you know, Freddy Krueger or, or Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers, and it just seems like it's of that era, but it feels too late. You know what I mean? Like it feels it feels like if the movie came out seven years prior, it would have been smack in the middle of that. But it feels like it's a little too late to be trying to do something like that. Um, or or do I just have my movie timelines off? Because this was what, 92, 94, something like that? It just something like that, yeah. And that that it, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that like well past like the peak of Nightmare and, and Friday and all those movies? Oh yeah, for 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 sure it's past the peak of those. But it's it's on the uh it's on the tail end of it. You know, the 90s were a weird time. Like, it was kind of where the uh, the old world met the new world, right? The the 2000s is where everything kind of the, the technological era te took off. And everything was kind of quaint. And uh, I don't know. It, it, was, it was a different world uh, prior to the 1990s. And the 1990s were that, that decade where everything was just changing all the time. So, sure um you're probably right it was probably there was probably quite a few um ideas that were coming to their last days uh in uh, during the time that that movie came out um but that's just the time that we lived in and the time that we uh kind of grew up in um while it is now a game cat specifically white tiger with the level one membership it says is metal helsing flat to vr port i am driving uh, has that been made public? Uh, is, Mel, is Metal Hellsinger, is he asking if that's from Flat to VR Studios? I believe so, yeah. Uh, we're not developing it. Um, so no, we're, we're not directly developing it. Um, we may still be involved in, on some level. Uh, I can't really say, but uh, it, it's not being developed by our people. Okay. I will say that. Uh, Joe Gaslighter, who... I'm assuming is not gaslighting us with the level one membership. It says flat to VR studios will save VR. Ha, 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 ha. Um, <laughs> and with your spirit, which is a fucked up weird thing that threw us all for a loop when we all had to go to church for the first time in like a decade. Um, that's, I mean, dude, that's, that's putting a lot of fucking, uh, that, that's putting a lot on that studio. Flat to VR studios will save VR. Um, well, it would be, it would be a lot of pressure. Um, if I felt like VR needs saving, uh, call me crazy, but I'm still in the, in the group that believes that it's inevitable. It's undeniable. It's going to happen. It doesn't matter what anyone says or does. It's just too cool to fail. And, um, that's where I'm at. And, and I think, Wes, I think most people would be with you in terms of like the long term. Like looking ahead into the future and saying, in 15 years, is VR going to still be a thing? Absolutely, right? It's just this short term that I think a lot of people are concerned about saying, like, you know, is if 
if PlayStation decides to be like, you know what, this this isn't working out. Maybe we haven't sold enough headsets. Maybe uh, whatever. Maybe it's just not worth our time right now. Um, and uh, and you know maybe seeing them walk away for a generation or two and then come back when in the, when the market's bigger. Uh, I feel like maybe that's what more people are thinking when they say, oh, you know, VR's uh, in trouble. Because uh, that, that's what I think when I think VR is in trouble. I, I think too many people are saying, uh, you know, unwilling to spend the extra $5 or the extra $10 on a game that they're interested in uh, and not understand the consequences of that. Saying, yeah, you know, saying we need to uh, support this medium far more than, uh, than I think they realize we do. And uh, and that maybe uh, you know we're sort of teetering on the edge of of VR being successful now rather than just successful later on, which, as you said, inevitably it will be. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I can agree with that. Um, certainly, platform to platform, game to game, uh, it's still touchy times. But but I gotta say, man, um, outside of you know the PlayStation. Uh, store specifically, uh, VR as a whole is in a better place today than it ever has been. Like there's there's more headsets out there, there's more awareness, there's more games to play. Like everything is is good. Um, you know, PlayStation. Like I said, any one platform aside, the the industry as a whole is is growing and thriving. So um, I'm not too worried about it. I do sometimes worry about uh, our beloved. PlayStation VR 2 uh, because I, I just don't understand what Sony's doing. Uh, but I have the utmost faith in the technology. And even if the unlikely scenario happens and PSVR 2 happens to not be as big a success as it was projected to be, uh, I still think there will be a, a PSVR 3. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that that's going to be decided on the su success or failure. Um, this won't be the Vita, even if it has an ending similar to Vita. Um, I do think that they'll come back to the well here and they'll continue to um, to support the technology because, again, it's undeniable. It's only going to grow and become more popular and smaller and more affordable. And the games are going to get better. I mean, it's just going to continue to improve. I totally agree. I totally agree. Uh, and then one more tip. Living Legend with the Canadian $2 tip says, Happy West Day, GameCats. Anyone know of the next showcase? I'm assuming nothing's been uh, announced, right? You're talking about PlayStation Showcase? I can um, only imagine. That's what he means. Well, I mean, Meta normally does a showcase right around April. Uh, I don't know exactly what the day is going to be for that. But the Meta Gaming Showcase normally takes place right around now. So I would imagine that would be coming. Uh, Sony, they don't announce anything until the day before. So no clue on that one. Yeah, I think the most we've ever seen Sony announce is the week before. Um, uh, and then everybody builds up their expectations for seven days straight and then gets let down simultaneously. It's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Can't wait to do it again a few more times this year. Um, although I do have... I have good feelings about whatever's coming next from Sony. Uh, probably just being optimistic for no reason whatsoever, as usual. Um, Wes, have you been playing uh, a little bit of Overdark like I have? Yeah, I played some today. Played about 90 minutes or so of it. And uh, I got to say, man, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it it's these games that I really miss from like the last generation of VR. These indie horror games, story driven, single player, um, that I don't know that they're they're not reinventing the wheel here. Like I've played this game ten times before, but I've loved it every time. It has a certain indie charm about it. While it's a pretty good looking game, there's still telltale signs like with the scaling being off. Some things are too small, some things are too big. Um you know the the uh, the subtitles don't exactly match the uh, the the the, uh, the 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 voice acting. There's all these little indie tale or, or little tales that it's an indie game, but uh, that's fine because I love these games and I think it it gives it a certain charm that I've uh, grown rather fond of. Yeah, I, I love that you said that there's these indie tells that seemingly will just never go away. Um, but then there's also these uh, these tells that it's a PSVR 2 game. 
right? It's like simultaneously, yes, it's an indie game, but it looks way better than anything we played from an indie studio last gen. Like this is bordering, and, I, and I don't, I'm saying bordering, and I want everybody to see that in big, bold, italicized letters, maybe capitalized, bordering on like Resident Evil 7 graphics from last gen, right? Like the, the rooms are just have so much detail and grit and grime and just feels lived in. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not Resident Evil 7, but God damn it, it's a good looking game and it's running at a, at a nice solid frame rate too. It looks like nice and sharp and smooth. Um, it, so yes, lots of indie tells, but also lots of next gen tells as well, which I love. Yeah, yeah, in terms of production, it's in much better shape than that Steam VR demo that we played like six weeks ago or whatever it was. Um, most of that reprojection is gone now and everything's pretty crisp and clear. Um, no, I, I was pretty happy with it, man. I, I think it does take a lot of inspiration from like old school horror games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, as you know, most good horror games these days do. Um, but I'm down for this 10 times out of 10. If every month we get one of these games, I'll play it every time and I will love it every time. Yep. I agree, man. I agree. And, uh, you know, as AJ and I said Monday, we're playing a pre, uh, pre-release pre version, pre-release build of the game. Um, and so, uh, so I finished off the game today and certainly saw a couple of the things that developers warned me about saying, hey, you know, this is, since this is a pre-release build, you're going to experience this and this. And I, 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 I can't wait to uh to play through it again when it gets its day one patch which should be out tomorrow for those of us reviewing should've it be, should have should have come today actually yeah i, mean, I talked to them like 20 minutes ago and i was like please tell yeah. me the patch is still coming today because i want to get a jump on this review uh and they're like no tomorrow for sure but did, uh but also i guess that goes in tandem with the news that the game technically got a two-day delay because it's supposed to be out today right and uh it ended up now get announced to come out on Friday, which makes Friday the biggest PSVR 2 horror day uh, in recent memory, because Madison will also be launching on Friday. Are, are we sure Madison's going to launch on Friday? Are I mean, we 100% sure? No. Like, with PSVR 2, we should never be 100% sure about anything. <laughs> uh, in fact, we should be in extremely unsure, uh, especially when it comes to Perp and Madison, uh, because that game has gotten a, a series of delays. But it's... Um, so this... Yeah, we don't have review keys. I haven't gotten to play it yet. My fingers are crossed that things are going smoothly and we don't get a last minute delay. So this is a, a pretty big strategic gamble on the part of uh, Nox Noctis because, so yeah, they're, they're moving their release date. So they're going head to head now with Madison, which could be a disaster for them because Madison is a much more well-known game. We've got people out there calling it the, the, the scariest game of all time and uh, and all the other sorts of praise being heaped on it. But at the same time, if Madison gets delayed again, and I, I got to say, that's somewhat likely to happen. We've seen this time and time again with, with perp games over the last six months. If Madison gets delayed again, all these horror fans are going to be showing up on Friday with their wallets. And what's going to be there? Overdark is going to be there. Yep. So uh, this could pay off in a big way for them. If uh, if it happens that uh, Madison does it uh, launch on Friday like it's supposed to, um, okay. Sorry, just uh, catching up on some DMs that might have been pertinent to this conversation. Uh, I want gotcha. to make sure we didn't leave anything uh, sitting on the table here. Um, man, just look at this footage, dude. Like this, this footage doesn't even convey um, how good this game looks, dude. So. All right, this is this is going to be such a sidelined conversation. Um, I don't even. I should I should have thrown this in the run of show. I should have thought about this. I should have tested this out a lot. Uh, but now I'm good. I've got to test this out for the rest of the week now because it's going to drive me crazy. Uh, I was talking to Izzard in our voice chat. I think yesterday, the day before, and uh, we were kind of speculating on as to whether or not the um, whether or not these recent updates to the PSVR2 firmware had eliminated or fixed some of the reprojection issues uh, that we've been experiencing. And the reason I want to bring that up right now is because I'm looking at this footage of uh, of, of Overdark. And uh, after talking to developers, you know, here I am thinking it feels like it's running at like 90 native and stutters occasionally. It's not. It's running 60 reprojected to 120. And it feels really smooth. 
And, and like, yeah. I'm just not seeing any evidence of reprojection at all. And even playing Genotype, uh, which is running reprojected as well currently until it gets its day one patch, it's it's so subtle. Like, yeah, I can see it, but it's so subtle. Um, and so I was just wondering if, if this is something that maybe you've noticed as well. Like, ha did, did they subtly, like, improve this thing without telling anybody? Or is it just our minds playing tricks with us? Wait, I don't know. Well, the, the only way that we'll know for sure is by going back to the worst offenders call and seeing mountain. if they've improved any. Yeah, Call of the Mountain specifically would be the best one to go back to. Um, I did I did notice uh, just a couple of times, very briefly, uh, signs of reprojection in Overdark today. But it was so quick and so brief that I really didn't even give it a second thought. I just kept right on going. Um so you're right. It's possible. We said this, I think, last week when we were on the air. Someone asked, you know, if we, uh, when we expect the reprojection fix to come in. Right. And our answer to that was, we'll probably won't know it until sometime after it comes. And literally the next time I fired up my PlayStation after that, there was a firmware <laughs> update. And I thought to myself, <laughs> I wonder if this is it. Maybe <laughs> that was it. Maybe they, maybe they've improved it. Yeah. Dude, if if because from what I've seen recently, if this is how reprojection is going to look on PSVR two moving forward, I'm suddenly fucking fine with it, right? Yeah, because it's, it's looked fine. so good recently. And uh, but like you said, yeah, there are games that really, really display it more than others, and so we'll have to reinstall some of those behemoths, not behemoth, the behemoth of <laughs> Called Mountain, behemoth. Uh, 60 reprojected confirmed and i mean in, in hubris uh hubris was another one that like really like was distracting to me when i first played it and so i feel like those are the games that i need to get back in and, and really uh and really feel it see it yeah you know, um work back synapse was well it wasn't very bad in synapse there were certain scenarios you could put yourself in and make it noticeable uh so that might be a good one to uh to test with as well get it I think I just made her uncomfortable. She's like, sorry. Um, yeah, Synapse is a good one to check out, too. Uh, at Living Legend, reading our minds with the Canadian $5 tip, says you guys should just test out Call of the Mountain and Hubris to see if it reprojection has improved. Uh, absolutely. We're going to have to. I, I know bringing this up randomly didn't give us a chance to uh, actually test it before talking about it, but I do think there's a sliver of truth here. I think we have to check this shit out. Um, uh on topic, I guess, Wes, uh, Twilight Zone, which I really complained about uh, at launch, Twilight Zone on PSVR 2 has gotten a significant update uh, a few days ago for anybody else who, uh, who who has not been at PAX. You already knew about this. Uh, Twilight Zone is now running at 90 native. Uh, the, the brilliant minds over at the VR Monkey Port Studio uh, heard my plea and you know the smooth turning was stuttering like crazy the game was making me sick to play and uh and they said they said oh damn well we should probably make this thing run at 90 native then and i said yeah i mean yeah if you can do that yeah. then go for it and like four days later <laughs> like which is it seems like such a short amount of time be like just like we're gonna you know make this thing just fucking run better we heard your complaint says it's not running well. We're going to make it run better. I was like, that's a great solution, which is, <laughs> um, I checked yeah, just it out. Another example. Go ahead. Uh, it's just another, just another example where I, I really believe that a lot of these studios say, uh, 90 native or 120 reprojected. Well, obviously 120 is better than 90. Why don't we go that way? And then come to find out it's not better. Uh, we would rather just have a native 90. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, Dude, I couldn't believe the difference. Couldn't believe the difference. I played through a good chunk of the worst episode because the worst episode, uh, Terra Firma, the second one, it, uh, that was the one that I think made me the most sick and also looked the worst uh, with smooth turning and, and the reprojection and all that. Um, and it's just so silky smooth now. I still don't love the game, you know, like, but, but I do feel like it, at least if you're interested in it now, it might be worth checking out. I, but man, we had such a kind of a crappy version of it before, and now we've got what could probably be considered one of the best versions of it. Um, it's just so silky smooth, and everything just moves so silky smooth. I'm just going to keep using that term over and over. It's very um, silky, very, very very smooth, and also very smooth. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's good news. Um, so hey, you know what? 
listen, they can fix the reprojection system all they want, uh, but, but there's there's a noticeable difference still when you play something that's running at 90 native. It just feels so clean, um, and uh, which I guess which I guess makes it uh, a good thing that the Arcanage folks over at Vitruvius have just announced that they're going to be able to, they're going to be running with uh, dynamic foveated rendering at a native 90. Uh, so, I mean, like, dude, word's getting around, man. I talked to those guys a couple months ago and said, you know, because it was for them, it was running at 60 reproject 120, and they said, everything's looking great. And I said, cool. Is there any way you can make it run at 90 native? And they said, they said, oh, shit. And we had this long conversation about, you know, how much praise Vertical Robot gets and, and how, like, you know, these guys are so talented that they should get the same kind of recognition with their, um, you know, their technical prowess. And um, so I'm really happy that they listened to my suggestion. I don't know if it was just me or if a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people were hounding them uh, regarding the frame rate and what it should be. Uh, but they've announced 90 native. With, uh, with dynamic foveated rendering. So, uh, excited about Arcan Age, Man, I can't wait for this game, bro. And uh, if it is really running at uh, 90 native without significant um, downgrades to the uh, to the uh, assets and environments, then that's, that's incredible because every bit of footage that we've seen from this game has just been teeming with life and just all sorts of stuff going on in these very expansive areas. Um, I can't wait to play this. Really, I only have one worry about it now. Um, I think it's going to be awesome while it lasts, but uh, Shadow Legend was very uh, notorious for not being very long. That's the only concern I have about this now is that maybe it's two or three hours long. Uh, if, if they bring us like five or more hours... This is probably going to be a game of the year contender. Yeah, I do feel uh, I I do feel as though it's going to be longer. Uh, one of the things that uh, I believe is I was talking to Blake Stone uh, earlier today, and he was talking about he's like one of it's, he he's, he feels like it's one of those games that the more you play it, the better it gets, and he says there's a lot of like you know backtracking and reusing areas and stuff, and so I feel like that maybe they might have like sort of learned from marvels and shadow legend and figured out like how to best use environments and uh keep the players engaged but also like saying hey you know head back that way you know and maybe like reuse uh some environments uh have make make them tread through areas they've already been through before uh and keeping it interesting along the way it sound it sounds like they know what they're doing and yeah i mean the trailer almost seems too good to be true um because these are the guys that like that we invented the term vraf for uh, and so, you know, they keep that up a lot. Wow. Horns on my end, traffic on my <laughs> end, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean like, man, it, again, just too good to be true. These, this, this, this could be, uh, this could be, I think much bigger or much more impressive than, than anyone's giving it credit for. Brentis summer scale says 10 hours, according to the devs, I believe. I would believe that. Um, and even and even if that means like to do everything, you know, even if that means like uh, to to go and find all the collectibles and, and, and whatever, like I would be totally down with that because I mean, Shadow Legend yeah. was, I think, four hours. And then like, I think I got another two hours out of it by going for the platinum. And so uh, and so if it's a similar case here, like seven hours, 10 hours to, to do everything, I would be be absolutely cool with that. AJ in the chat says yeah, Blake absolutely. Stone needs to become an action movie hero with that name. There's a there's a game called Blake Stone. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I think we joked about that in the first interview I did with them. Could be wrong. Hey Perky, PS4 or two Game Cat says Blake Stone is BS. Oh no, <laughs> get it, <laughs> get it, you yeah, get it. Oh man. All right. Um, so let's see. We talked about Twilight Zone. We talked about Arcan Age. Um, Piatrek F with the level two membership in the chat says any hot PSVR two rumors from PAX. I don't think so. <laughs> Nothing, Nothing we can talk about. Hot. That's for sure. Maybe some ice cold. Uh, no, just kidding. No, no, there wasn't much of a VR presence at all at PAX. Um, so no, sorry, but no. <laughs> Uh, Wes, have you had a chance to check out this uh, spring sale that just kicked off on the PlayStation Store? 
I looked at it a little bit, uh, but I imagine we're about to uh, do a little bit of a deep dive on it, eh? I think so, man. I'm going to bring it up here on the screen so that everyone can participate. Um, let's see what we got here. Oh, man. I've got I've to filter out everything. Yeah, that link I sent you definitely is not helpful. You're right. So let's see. Mine is pre-filtered. Uh, all right, let's see what I got here. VR, PSVR 2. And then that gives us 75 results, which is uh, pretty good, even though some of it is DLC, etc. Um, I, I didn't think PSVR 2 had any games, Brian. What do you mean 75 results? 75 results. Games just on sale, too, which is craziness. Um, it's been a, the, the, the crazy part is that the headset's only been out for a year. Um, yeah, I know, right? So... Oh man, uh, dude, I was just man. I, I we have so many things on my mind right now. It's hard for me to stay focused on the on the topic at hand. Um, but let's just stay focused on the topic at hand because I don't want to spill the beans on shit that I'm not supposed to talk about. Um, all right, man. Let's let's take a look at this thing. Uh, in the first row here, it looks like Gran Turismo is forty bucks instead of seventy. Uh, I don't has it gone. I don't know if it's gone on sale for cheaper than that. But man, what a fucking deal. If you're playing this on PSVR 2, just an unbelievable experience. That's another one I guess we could check the reprojection out on. People complained about uh, kind of shadowy cars and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I didn't think it was much of a problem. Uh, I think this game is one of the reasons to own a PSVR 2. And it's $30 off right now. Right. Um, if you don't already have Gran Turismo 7, which I imagine most of you probably do now is definitely the time to get in uh yeah for real dude uh we were saying uh we were definitely saying again and uh, all these conversations sort of blur so if we talked about this on monday's show i apologize um but i i believe i was talking to samson uh and we we're talking about packs and saying that man if, if there were seven racing rigs and seven uh psvr2 headsets all playing gran turismo 7 all lined up at like some kind of like officially sanctioned sony booth at pax dude they would have sold thousands and thousands of vr headsets along with thousands of copies of gran turismo 7 and thousands of racing rigs on top of it because it's just the ultimate it's just the ultimate vr gaming experience um it's really sad that these things that that setups like this aren't just fucking everywhere uh so that people can try yeah. it out yeah, and there was a crowd for it too. I mean, the the, the one legit uh, VR booth at PAX was the Shell Games booth for Silent Silent Slayer, yep. and they kept the line the whole time. Yep. So um, there's definitely an appetite for it out there, especially among the younger crowds like attend, uh, you know, things like PAX. So I think you're right. I think if they would have had a full blown Gran Turismo set up there with a whole big, you know display to draw people in from uh, all sides of the floor probably would have uh, gone a great way to sell people on PSVR to you. Wes, what do you think of the $40 price tag for Horizon Call of the Mountain instead of $60? Yeah, love it. Uh, I think most people that have PSVR already have this mm -hmm. as it is a pack-in title. Uh, but I, I've said it many times. I think this title is underrated. I think people were amazed by this game until they finished it. And then the kind of story, the, the, the negative story on it's been written since people finished it. Uh, I don't think people remember how much they liked this game when they actually played it. And uh, I think that this too is another reason to own PSVR. I think it's a, a really good game. Could have been better. Certainly could have been better. There are ways that uh, this very good game could have become a, a great game. Uh, but I do think, still think it's a must own for PSVR to uh, uh, gamers out there. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. There was um, uh, when I went back to it, like you know, because I'd reviewed it and I reviewed it favorably, and uh, and. But then, yeah, that sort of that, that negative feeling sort of just crept in uh, and stuck with me. And, the, you know, the words too much climbing, which everyone just, you know, repeats ad nauseum, which is true. I think there's way too much climbing in the game. However, when I went back in to play it again to, to uh, for our top 25 debate, it really like kind of opened my eyes to be like, yeah, there's a lot of fucking climbing in here. But God damn, the climbing's great and the game is great and there's so much stuff going on. Yes, it's not a great Horizon game, but I think it's a great VR game. Um, and for 40 bucks, this is sort of the price that I feel like it belongs at. I think asking 60 was a little much, but uh, this is a good price for it. Yeah, I agree. 
Uh, no Man's Sky, $30 instead of 60 I feel like this is the price it always goes on sale for. It's $30, okay. I think, more often than it is $60. Uh, a new update just came out today. have no idea what that's about. Something about freighters they, or um, some shit. <laughs> they, they revamped the, the spaceports. So when you go into these, uh, these areas out in space, kind of like these satellite areas... Um, they completely reworked the the inside of those. So there's much more to do now in terms of uh, interactions and shopping. You can customize your ship now in there with a lot more options than you had before. And um, there's there's some other like cosmetic stuff that they did outside of the spaceports as well. Uh, but it's the typical huge No Man's Sky updates that we've all gotten used to. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm not even I'm not even a big No Man's Sky fan. I want to be. I've, I've said that I will definitely spend more time in this game at some point when I can free up a weekend and just play nonstop uh, and get better impressions. Uh, but I will, um, but I will absolutely go to bat for how beautiful this game is and how much there is to do. And so, uh, if you know, exploration and all that is is up your alley, man. I think for thirty bucks, it's definitely worth uh, taking a risk on if you're not sure. Uh, 35 bucks instead of 50 for, uh, Arizona Sunshine 2. What? Uh, yeah, man. I, I dig it. It's a $15 price cut. Probably, again, it should have been 40 or $45 to begin with. Uh, but 35 it's a, a definite buy for me. Uh, revisited this game, uh, recently for the first time since, uh, you know, late last year when it launched. Um, and really enjoyed it, man. It was like, uh, it, you know, I replayed the first half of the game pretty much with uh, in co-op this time. Uh, but it was kind of like a new experience for me because when I played it, when it launched, you know, I had all this stuff going on in my personal life. I was super busy. My, my right arm was paralyzed and I had to shoot left-handed <laughs> like before. Um, so it was fun. It was fun to get back in it and actually have my right hand and, and have uh, someone in there with me. And... Um, you know, of course, it is what it is. It is more Arizona Sunshine, uh, but I'm a fan of Arizona Sunshine. So, uh, yeah, definitely in on this one as well. Yeah, I'm in on this one, too. I thought I thought it was a fine game. Um, I think I put it in the seven somewhere, and I stand by that. I like, definitely you know, feels, felt underwhelming from, like, a big epic moment type situation, like, you know, zombie apocalypse. I feel like should have had, like, major bosses and, you know, crazy big moments. Um, but overall, it was, a, it was a fun adventure, and uh, and and better than the first. More zombies to kill. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to go wrong with it. Uh, and they've certainly made a few uh, decent upgrades since launch as well. Oh yeah, so. that's something else that I noticed about it too. Is uh, you know, all the clips are still there now, like there were before. Mm -hmm. But now you pick them up and you get two rounds from them instead of seven and eight like it was before. Oh, interesting. So. Uh, so it, yeah, there was a bit more uh, of a reason to scavenge now. Um, you can put grenades on the dog now, which was a, a pretty big improvement. And there's like an apocalyptic uh, difficulty mode that's actually very, very challenging. So um, definite improvements to the game since I played it before. Cool. All right. Those are some pretty big ones near the top of the list. We can kind of speed run a few of these and then we'll stop when we get to another big one. Um, I think 25% off Tetris effects, so it's 30 instead of 40. I think that's that's cool. Um, but I feel like if you haven't bought it yet, you probably don't care all that much. Um, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, 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 a fan of, I'm a fan of Tetris effect yeah. uh, on all platforms. PSVR 2 is the best platform to play it on, though. Uh, the, the, the haptics really add another layer to the already uh, sensory overload that that game throws at you. Agreed. Agreed. And the resolution boost from PSVR one was significant. Uh, really makes it more immersive. Um, Agreed. We got Ghostbusters: Rise of the Ghost Lord for twenty bucks instead of thirty. I'm I'm probably gonna be alone on this, uh, but I just don't give a fuck. Ghostbusters. I don't even I don't care about the <laughs> new uh, Frozen Empire DLC coming out. I, I just feel like this game is this game is lost. It's time to move on. Yeah, uh, I don't know, man. I didn't hate it to begin with. Uh, I didn't love it either. Uh, it's had, I think, three pieces of DLC that's dropped since I played it last. Mm -hmm. And more content was probably my biggest 
complaint about the uh, the game to begin with. So I don't I don't want to throw it out um, just automatically based on my early impressions of it. Uh, and twenty bucks, I mean, it's not a lot of money. So True. Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know which way to go on that one. I'm not educated enough to uh, to say. Uh, I will still check out the Frozen Empire DLC because fucking I would ha- be happy to be wrong. Project Wingman Frontline 59, uh, 20% off, so it's 24 instead of 30. This was a major letdown. Uh, I don't think $6 off is going to make it feel like less than a uh, less of a letdown. Nope. Crap is crap, and it don't matter what <laughs> price tag you put on it. Such a shame, too. I would just, uh, just wait for Aces of Thunder. There's no reason to pick this one up at the moment. Pistol Whip, 21 instead of 30. Great game. PSVR 2 versions, best version. Hard to hard to complain about this with all the free DLC it's gotten. Right, uh, I think what you said about Tetris Effect really fits here too with Pistol Whip. Like, Pistol Whip's great. Most of you probably already have it. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you don't have it, I'd certainly pick it up at twenty one bucks. But uh, it's kind of old news at this point. Uh, beat the Beats VR. I haven't even played this one. I got to be honest. I, I had played Box to the Beat and uh, Beat the Beats. I, just, I don't know, man. Just too much, too many things that all just kind of feel the same. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's something here, but I haven't even checked it out yet. Yep, same here. I don't know. Okay, well that gives us. Uh, what, what order are we even looking at? Dude, this is just fucking random. Hold on, but must be bestsellers or something, right? Just, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it must be. It's just Maybe through deals in there. Uh, so let's see. We got Moss for thirteen dollars <laughs> instead of oh, instead of twenty. I forget that Moss got in a price drop. Um, but dude, if you haven't played Moss yet, Jesus, PS, it looks beautiful on PSVR two, uh, and it's only thirteen dollars. This game was going for thirty, I believe, for most of its life. Uh, absolutely, pick it up while, while it's thirteen dollars. What a great game! Yeah, that's a bargain bin deal if I ever saw one right there. Classic VR game, one of the best in the VR catalog as a whole. And definitely a must own for anyone. Yeah, uh, kill it with fire for nine bucks. I'm gonna say, dude. I'm gonna say like, I think I don't know what I gave this game five, six, something like that. Super silly. Uh, if you're scared of spiders like I am, it definitely will have you on your toes and just kind of give you the heebie-jeebies uh, nonstop. But I mean, for you know, for nine dollars, it's one of those games that if you're even remotely interested in just. It's job sim with spiders. <laughs> you just get to goof off and do dumb shit. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like giving a partial recommendation. Yeah, I mean, maybe because it's nine bucks and it's even less if you've got plus. By the way, they, they give you a little bit more off for having plus. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll never go back into this again. I didn't hate it, but there's too many better things to play out there uh, for me to give this any more time. That's true. I guess once you get below the ten dollar price tag for me, I'm sort of like willing to, you know, to shrug my shoulders right. and go, ah, "It's fucking cheap, man!" I'm like, ah, just go for it. It's fucking cheap. Um, yeah, understandable though. I believe I agree with you wholeheartedly. Vertigo two, uh, twenty four bucks, an extra five percent off for with plus uh, instead of thirty. It's it's not that much cheaper, uh, but at least all the bugs have been fixed since launch. I heard they've smoothed out some of the frame rate issues. Uh, have you played this one recently, Wes? Not on PlayStation. I, I still haven't even tried it on PlayStation, to be honest. Um, on, on PC, this is one of the best games I ever played uh, in VR. I love Vertigo 2. So uh, as long as they got all the technical stuff worked out, uh, I think 24 bucks is a, is a deal for this game. Um, yeah, great. I mean, great game. So imaginative. Um, it, we've said it before on Gamescast, but it's worth repeating. It feels like a game that was made in Dreams but in the best possible way, right? It just, it just feels like a game that was developed by somebody who just didn't have to worry about deadlines or, or, or listening to investors or anything else. It's just like the, straight from somebody's creativity into a game, like just like right from their brain into a game. It's just like, oh, I'm going to make, you know, enemies with hands for heads. Ha 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 ha. You know, it's like just right. fucking whatever, whatever the dude thought of, he threw into the game and it just, it just feels like that. It feels like a kid drew up a design document and then somebody who knew what they were doing made it into a game. And I, and there's something very appealing about that. Um, cause you just don't see yeah. that kind of imagination in games lately. And there's just tons of, of lore going on in the background. Um, a, a lot of like variety with weapons and enemies that you don't typically see in VR games. It feels more like a flat game in that respect. 
um it's just really good man it's it's uncommonly good for a vr game yeah uh on the opposite end of the spectrum we have hello neighbor search and rescue which i despise um it's half price and i'm still like just stay the fuck away from this game i when i played it, it had a ton of bugs a ton of issues and like um for me it was practically unplayable and even if all of those have been fixed i just really didn't enjoy the game that much so i don't i don't care if this is five dollars i'd probably still not be able to ignore all of its faults yeah i can't really say um i took everyone's advice and just avoided this one i was a bit disappointed though and the pretty much unanimous negative uh sentiment about this one because i felt like this one had a little bit of a potential to bring a crowd with it i mean it's a fairly well-known franchise outside of vr um so the fact that they kind of dropped the ball here with this one is disappointing uh seventh guest is 20 bucks instead of 30 uh dude great game great game like i mean yeah. I, you can watch excuse me you can watch my reviews my review if you want like a lot more you know uh, insight as to what I thought about the puzzles, but I think overall, like it was a great collection of puzzles, and it was a great kind of uh, the glue that kept it all together was was pretty decent uh, and a great homage to the original. So, uh, yeah. twenty bucks is a steal. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely great game. Maybe the best uh, story driven puzzler on PSVR two. Um, it's really exceptional. High production value. Um, good story. Good challenging puzzles i mean it's uh, but it's not too hard i mean it's 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 great I, I thought 30 bucks was the the perfect price for it so uh 20 bucks is a deal uh, i thought 30 bucks was the right price for hubris and now you don't have to pay that it's uh 18 dollars with a little bit of extra savings for plus uh i love hubris i really do i think i might have overrated it a little bit uh when it came to the review i gave it a nine feel like a mid eight would have been a little bit more appropriate but that's how i feel about all my reviews about 0.5 higher than they should be uh just dude a great single player story driven narrative adventure that's beautiful in the headset and maybe it looks better with you know if, if they fix the reprojection i don't fucking know um this is i i, I really really enjoyed hubris and i can't wait to see what this team has coming next because this is supposedly the first in a much much larger uh universe that they've already kind of created yeah they are busy uh working on a new project I, and i honestly don't know if that's a continuation of uh hubris or if some it's something completely different but i can't wait to find out because you're right hubris is great uh and for 15 dollars for plus members i mean it's kind of a it's another one of those deals it's a bargain bargain basement prize for a great game <laughs> GC13, the Diet Pepsi Cat in the chat said, just change your rating system to 0.5 to 10.5. Then everything will have shifted. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. All right. Just everybody keep that in mind. 0.5 is the lowest score you can get. And now things go up to a 10.5. Tiffany fixed all my problems. Jurassic World Aftermath collection uh, for 12 bucks instead of 30. This was, I, I'm, gonna, I'm struggling with this one, man, because I, I've, I've only played about the first, I don't know, two, maybe three hours of this one. And I'm sort of just going through the motions you know for something that's supposed to be a like a kind of a stealth game where you're hiding the lockers a lot you know wait for the dinosaurs to walk away and then run to the next locker and then solve a few puzzles here and there i i just feel like it should be more exciting and and i really and, and i think maybe it's the cartoon art style the cell shaded art style if they had delivered this exact game but with like photorealistic graphics and like scary ass dinosaurs and made the whole thing look like the first jurassic park movie um I feel like I'd be in love, but it just feels so, it just feels kind of cheap. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. Um, it's good. Not great. Um, the, the story bits are cool. The voice acting's good. I, I thought the cell shading looked all right, but, um, you're right. Like, um, it is pretty one dimensional in, in terms of gameplay. Uh, and that does tend to, it's weird. It's one of those things when you come to a part that's more difficult, like that takes away from it because you don't want to repeat and get better, which is normally the opposite, right? When you come to something that's more difficult and it takes a few tries, I typically appreciate that. But uh, this game seems to have just the opposite effect on me. Like, I just want to get through it. Um, but at 12 bucks, I mean, technically for what 
was originally two titles. Right. Um, I think it's the right price for it. So if you're a fan of Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, um, that's a that's a decent enough price to check it out. I think. I think so. I think twelve bucks is. I I mean yeah I mean because I mean, I'm sort of at like a five I guess based on what I played so far maybe six depending on if it gets better. Um, twelve bucks again very forgiving at that price. <laughs> right. Uh, not not terribly forgiving about tennis on court. I'm glad they fixed some of the problems from launch with like the difficulty modes not being diff different from each other. Now they fixed that. It actually gets more difficult the on different tournaments you play, but the online, as far as I know, is still really terrible. Uh, and it's like impossible to play. So, uh, so yeah, so $20 instead of 35, uh, is not, I, it doesn't save it for me, unfortunately. So that's a good point, Brian. Um, unfortunately I will get the credit for that point. Um, because that's how tennis on court scoring goes. <laughs> Brian get, makes a point. And I get the credit for it. I make a point. Brian gets the credit for it. Uh, this was a mess when we played it. And it's probably better now. Sure, it's probably better now. Uh, but I, I wouldn't know it uh, because that first impression was just so bad that uh, I never went back. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Um, the, the, in the, I, I, I'd actually completely forget about the scoring issues. Uh, it, for me, it was the, um, the delay in watching the yeah. uh, opponent's animations. It was like, I see so you go right past Miles, and then the ball comes back, and then I see him swing, and I was like, oh, shit, I, I had my guard down because I didn't realize, yeah, no, this game needs a lot of work, and I'll have to yeah. check back in on it to see if it's been fixed. Even even if it, you could see the opponent making contact with the ball, it's still, with the tennis game, you need to be one to one with no latency because you have to read your opponent's position and movement to determine where you should be in anticipation of where the ball is going to go. Mm -hmm. Like it's not something that you can have a half a second of delay on because that's going to screw you. Uh, but you're right. It was like a fucking three second latency or something. When we tried to play it, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Old Darth reminds us in the meantime, there's racket fury, which is phenomenal. Um, drums rock. Let's see, twenty-seven bucks for the uh, complete music edition. Uh, I don't see the regular edition anywhere, but the uh, the Offspring music pack or Legendary music pack is on sale as well. I'm just, dude. I I don't know. Like you guys know this by now. I just uh, drums rock didn't resonate with me the way that I expected it to. Everyone else seems to love it, and I hate that I'm not like really finding the passion here, finding the love for for this game the way that everyone else does. Um, but. I feel like I'm in the minority, so I don't even want to talk down about it because I recognize that I recognize when I'm in the minority on something, man. It's like it sounds like it's a pretty good game, and I just can't figure out why I don't like it. Yeah, a lot of fans of Drums Rock out there, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, I'm not a fan of drumming games in VR. I just have never found one that I really like. I can't immerse myself in a drum game because there's just no like feedback that you would get in real life from actually hitting a drum. You yes. know, in real life, you feel yourself hitting the drum and you use that um, to, to kind of build your rhythm internally. And VR, the, as of right now, there's just no solution to the fact that your drums are air and you're swinging through them instead of hitting something. And I personally have just never been able to get past that with any drumming game, and uh, this one included. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I feel that way about Ragnarok. I feel that way about audio beats. I can't remember the PSVR one ones we got. It all kind of has the same issue for me. Uh, right. Hellsweeper, which, by the way, we shouldn't let this one come and go without saying... Uh, that we should be getting that patch tomorrow, the, the one with dynamic foveated rendering, the one that uh, is supposedly going to push the graphics uh, as close to the PC VR version as we should expect. I think this, this is the big patch. It's supposed to be coming tomorrow. Um, so I've been ignoring Hellsweeper for quite a while. Uh, but it's, but if everyone, if, if you guys in the chat have also been ignoring Hellsweeper for quite a while, waiting for the big patch that we should have gotten months ago, uh, it's on sale. It's 20 bucks instead of 30. Wait till tomorrow. Wait to he wait to hear what the uh, how how well the patch improves things, uh, and this might be the time to buy. Yeah, agreed. I, I kind of feel like uh, tomorrow is the unofficial launch day 
for Hell Sweeper. I think we've all kind of been ignoring it because of just how bad it was on launch. And uh, I, I mean, I haven't even gone back to it on PC just out of my disappointment from the uh, the overall launch. Um, so no, I'm looking forward to it. I think this game has a lot of potential, and uh, especially with the co-op. And um, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to getting back in there and, and really giving this one a, a real shot this time. Same. So um, yeah, yeah. Stay tuned. Uh, I'm assuming uh, I'm assuming Miles and I will be talking quite a bit about Madison on Friday if that game actually comes out. Um, but also, we'll be talking about Hellsweeper um, as long as everything happens the way it's supposed to. The footage looks good. I know they've got some before and afters out there. It looks really good. Res Infinite with 20 bucks instead of 30. I love Res. I've loved Res since PS2. Yep. I never played the Dreamcast Same. version, but man, every single time there's a new version of Res, I play it and I love it. And, uh, you know, again, it looked, it looked practically crystal clear on PSVR 1 as it was. And then we get the even better looking PSVR 2 version with better haptics, which is kind of been Rez's thing since the Dreamcast, right? Like the the trans vibrator and all that. Like this is we we're so lucky to have headset haptics and, and amazing haptics in our uh sense controllers. This is this is such a good price for this game. Definitely pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Love Rez. It's an absolute classic. And um you can play it with your eyes now, yeah. which you couldn't do before. Which, which I don't think which really I don't really cool. like to do. <laughs> you can do it. I don't think I like to. It's not the best. It kind of does make it too easy to play it that way, but it's cool. It's a cool demo to like put people in and say, "Hey, just you can aim with your eyes." Right. Uh, I, please, for the love of God, do not overlook the next game on our list. Propagation Paradise Hotel is fourteen dollars instead of dude. The fact that it launched at twenty, like I get that it's a shorter game. It's like four, four and a half, I think, for my first playthrough hours. Um, but man, the level of polish Propagation Paradise Hotel has. It's just, it's kind of unbelievable. I remember getting in there and just being blown away by how good it looked and then by how good it controlled and then by how good just my entire experience was overall. Like really kind of redefined what a $20 game should be in VR, uh, you know, in an era where like, you know, most games of this type are probably closer to 30. Um, it was an amazing deal at 20. If you're not picking it up for 14 bucks, you're out of your goddamn mind. Agreed. Uh, this is one of those games that's out on every VR platform, but it's definitely the best on PlayStation VR 2. There's a reason why they took months longer to bring it to PSVR, and uh, it paid off, uh, because this is an exceptional game. Uh, the only flaw with, well, I'm going to say the only flaw. It has a few flaws, the biggest one being that it is quite short. Um, but Brian's right. It, it's it's very polished, and um, it does some things. while it while it doesn't reinvent the wheel, and it's definitely putting us into the same scenario that we've been in a hundred times in these games before, it does do a few things differently than we've ever seen before. And um, yeah, definitely worth a playthrough and underpriced. As Brian said, at $20, it was a bit underpriced. So at $14, uh, definitely uh, I recommend. Uh, let's tackle a couple of tips, and then we'll get to page two. <laughs> We're going to have to change the name of the stream to... Uh... The spring sale is here because I doubt we're going to spend much time on uh, Metal Helsing VR when this is over. Uh, and we don't want Waleed getting mad at us. This is very important. No, uh, I'm just kidding. We love you, Waleed. You can get mad at us all you want. We'll not change our opinion of you. Uh, Living Legend with a Canadian $5 tip says, Imagine Switch 2 gets a VR headset and it would be rad. Oh, it would be rad. Would love to play Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury in VR. Fingers crossed for Nintendo VR. Uh, yeah, uh, Mario Kart. Again, that's th yep. there. There are very few Nintendo games I want to play in VR. Like I would love to be Link first person, be climbing in Breath of the Wild, and you know, swinging my sword first person, all that. But Mario Kart is. I mean, dude, I don't. I love Galaxy Kart. We all know this, but like, nothing had no kart racer ever has ever had the polish of a Mario Kart game. And like just seeing that and being able to play that in VR would be incredible. This is going to happen. This is 100% going to happen. And this is how it's going to happen. Nintendo's going to release a headset mm -hmm. that on a technical level is probably equivalent to um, Oculus Quest 1. Um, it'll do a few things quite 
cleverly that we've never seen done before on a VR headset, things that no one else ever thought of. Um, but it'll have Mario in VR, it'll have Mario Kart in VR, it'll have Zelda in VR, it'll have Metroid in VR, it'll have Pokemon, and it'll be a huge hit. Uh, now, if, is it coming next year? Is it coming in five years? Is it coming in 10 years? I don't know. But this is what Nintendo does. They put out subpar hardware with the most uh, famous and well-known franchises in VR. They always have a clever twist in terms of the technology, uh, something that no one else has thought of yet. And people will always eat it up and love it. And I absolutely have every faith that this day is coming. I, the, the, was that your Jim Ryan impression? You're like, is it coming this year? No. Next year? No. The year <laughs> after? Um, also, I saw somebody in the chat say Metroid VR. And dude, Metroid Prime, prime candidate for a VR game. All three of those nope. games. Phenomenal. Castlevania? Come on, bro. Would be amazing. Joshua Ruskart with the $5 tip says, just purchased Hello Neighbor and Very Bad Dreams, despite your warnings. Uh if it is as bad as you say, at least I'm supporting PSVR too. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the, I think buying games of those of that caliber is uh, is fine, right? I mean, very bad. I had fun with Very Bad Dreams, and the PSVR two version yeah, of Very good, Bad man. Dreams is better. Um, it's just uh, just know what you're in for, and uh, I think when you buy like kind of a rough around the edges game or even a bad game, there's always fun to be had with everything. And that's why when somebody goes, oh, I love this game. I can't believe you didn't like it. I'm like, but there's fun to be had with every game. It just depends on how critically you want to look at it. So Joshua, I hope you enjoy that shit. And not shit. I mean, that those <laughs> turds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was so funny. Uh, we got Resident Evil 7 Gold Edition and Village bundled for 30 bucks instead of 80. Listen, what? This, right. It's crazy. This this is only this only makes sense for people who have a PSVR one headset as well, so they can play Resident Evil Seven, and they can play Resident Evil Village. But man, if if you've got both hooked up, unbelievable! Two of the best v, be, be, two of the best VR games ever made for thirty dollars. Yeah, thirty bucks is crazy. I mean, that's a good price on Village alone. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the, getting seven bundled in with it, both of them being the Gold Edition, which has all the the DLC and stuff as well. Um, yeah, love it. Best VR games I've ever played. Um, or my favorite, I should say. It's my favorite VR games I've ever played. Dude. Uh, they, so yeah, definitely in on that one. I, I, I desperately need to know that Resident Evil 7 is coming to PSVR 2. Desperately need to know this. Like, I don't even, I, I don't, I don't even care all that much about like getting any kind of like major upgrade, you know? Like at this point, I just need to be able to play the same game that I played on PSVR one, uh, you know, maybe with graphical improvements, obviously. Uh, but like, even if it means like it's the same kind of controls that we had on PSVR one, I just need to know it's coming. Like, cause I don't want to hook up my PSVR one to play that game again. Um, let me let me play it with the, let me play it with the it, Dual Sense. That's fine. It's a weird thing um, because it's a unique situation with Capcom because they actually have incentive not to to bring it along because if they let it lie as it is for just a few years then they can do a full-blown remake and sell it like it's a brand new game all over again True. but the more they modernize it and keep bringing it along to, to new platforms and new hardware the longer they have to wait before they can sell it again so i don't i don't know if we'll ever see that it might be a, a psvr3 title uh the remake the problem was the problem with this is that it's on Sony, right? Because obviously they paid for the RE7 uh, VR mode the same way they paid for the Village and RE4 modes, uh, and so if and with Sony kind of dragging their feet on these PSVR2 remasters of these first party PSVR1 games, it it this is it's this is all the same conversation. It's like where's Blood and Truth, where's Astrobot, where's everybody's golf. Where's RE7? It's it, it should it's all included in the same conversation because it was paid for by Sony. And so if Sony's not willing to pay Capcom to do it or pay other studios to bring these games over, then it's on Sony. Uh, and I, and I don't know, I don't know what their hesitation is. Right? Dude, this is shit that would sell headsets. Um, although at the same time, I know I've said this before, I'm sure Sony doesn't want people to look at PSVR2 as the Resident Evil machine. 
You know, people already complain there's too much right. horror. And there's like, oh, man, all you got over there is Resident Evil. I can hear people complaining already. We got some of the best games ever made, but all it is is Resident Evil. <laughs> Shut your dirty mouth. That's all it needs to be, okay? For sure. <laughs> you know, right? I'm just going to change this to Resident Evil without parole. It'll be fine. Get on with it. Uh, Border Bots VR for 16 bucks instead of 20 I was surprised by how good Border Bots was. Um, I still haven't finished it. Uh, I have, I, I feel like I have a long way to go, but definitely, it's, dude, tons of polish in that game. Um, if it sounds like your thing, pick it up. You should have bought it already. Um, didn't play it. Not interested in it. Uh, I have no idea. Cool. Yeah, it's. I mean, you know, only four dollars off. I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, Red Matter Collection. This is a good deal. Uh, you get both games for thirty bucks instead of forty. Uh. Again, two of the best games in VR and some incredible PSVR 2 versions of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm must own games. Uh, terrific price for the bundle. Um, technical masterpiece uh, type games. Some of the best indie games we've ever seen. Uh, definitely in at $30. $30 is a fair price for either of these titles. So just kind of look at it as a buy one, get one free sale. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start picking and choosing from the rest of this. I don't want to go one by one. We still got two more pages. So as long as you're cool to go right. along for that ride. Uh, VR Skater is $20 instead of $35. Um, this is a must-have in my book, if you're willing to put the work in. It's, it's a heavy discount for sure. And again, it's half off if you, uh, if you have plus. Um, I was surprised at how good it was. I was surprised that... Um, how accurately it portrays real life skating. Uh, I wasn't expecting to enjoy it, and I did rather enjoy it. Uh, with that said, if you want to progress in it whatsoever, you're going to be putting a lot of time into it. Yep. It's a game that you have to practice and practice and practice and practice to get good at. So, if you're someone who's time limited, maybe not for you, uh, but if you're a fan of skating and skate culture, um, definitely worth a look. Yeah, yep. Um, Smash VRS, uh, C Smash VRS. I don't know what's wrong with my brain. Uh, it's 15, 59, 20% off with an extra, tw oh, uh, save an extra 20% with plus. That's actually a huge wow. uh, discount. So 40% off of the $20. Uh, they, they must have lowered the, yeah, they did lower the price because originally this launched at $30. Um, at this point, I don't think you really have an excuse not to play C Smash. I think it's, uh, it, They've added all the modes that they promised. Um, there's there's way more content than there was at launch. I haven't had a chance to go back in and, and really spend time with it. But, uh, you know, at, at the sale price, I think it's kind of hard to go wrong. C-Smash is a lot of fun. Yeah, I don't know. Haven't played it. Uh, I did expect this just by looking at it to kind of uh, be the, the spark uh, for this generation. Everyone kind of missed spark when it went away. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't played it, so I don't really know how good or it is or isn't. It's, really it's not it. Spark for sure. There's 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 a level of intensity that C Smash never hits that Spark had, um, but but C Smash is still really good. And like I said, for the sale price. Um, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Uh, let's see. If there's if there's any that you, that jump out at you, Wes, please let me know. Uh, all these walkabout uh, DLCs are on sale for like two and three bucks. Yep. Uh, of course. The, those are all good. Uh, After the Fall is only sixteen dollars right now. That's a highly polished game. Uh, that's a fun with with friends. Definitely worth a uh, sixteen dollars in my opinion. Oh, I agree, and that's something I'm sure most people aren't expecting to hear from me because I don't really love After the Fall. Uh, it was fine, but man, uh, the PSVR two version is super polished. I love the haptics and the uh, the clarity in this game. It looks great, uh, but uh, I thought forty dollars was just crazy uh crazy price point for something that didn't have a lot of different locations thankfully they've added a lot of different locations and if the gameplay loop really appeals to you 16 dollars is an incredible deal so i'm with you Wes. um even though you probably won't find me playing it <laughs> so uh, i will say however toss for 12 bucks instead of 20. dude i toss kind of falls into its own category where i feel like i underrated it like boost that shit up by 0.5 instead of by bringing it down by 0.5. <laughs> Toss was actually a lot of fun. Um, it sucks that they don't seem to care about bringing the multiplayer over to PSVR 2. Uh, I'm assuming that has something to do with sales. Uh, but but as is, 
$12 is a, a great deal. And maybe if a bunch of people buy it at the $12 price point, maybe, you know, maybe the PSVR 2 market will suddenly be more appealing to the developers and they can, uh, they'll bring the multiplayer over. But, sure. Yep. Or you can wait on another better game that's coming that I won't name. But Sky you know, like Toss is pretty good. Is it Sky Climb? It might be Sky Climb. Nice. Nice. I was just talking to uh, Pedro over there, VR Monkey, about Sky Climb. And uh, I don't know, man. It sounds it sounds kind of exciting. I we we've we've kind of got this uh we've kind of got this platformer thing going on. Um where it's like, you know, we just we just got we had toss, we, we just recently had stilt, we got max mustard coming. Um, you know, we got we kind of like this resurgence of platformers. And uh yeah. I think I think sky climb could be fun. Yeah, it's good times for sure. Um, um I'm assuming you did not have a chance to play Journey to Foundation. No, I did play Journey to Foundation actually, and um, I did not like it the first time I played it. Okay, man, this thing is a fucking slow burn. It takes some time to get going, uh, but if you don't mind putting in three hours before a game gets good, it actually turns out to be pretty good. And uh, twenty dollars, I feel like, is a good price for it. Nice. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, uh, Nihilus Ryan, the game Feline always goes to bat for this game, and uh, and I have not spent the three hours it takes to get good yet. Uh, I have spent, uh, 30 minutes <laughs> at best. And I was oh, like, God. oh man, like you just gotta be in the right mood for this game, right? You gotta be, I, I, I've got to pull up a chair, get comfy, maybe pop some popcorn and just ready Don't to get too comfy. You'll fall asleep. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying is like, I, I play games standing up for the most part. And so when I walk up to a character and I just have to stand there and listen to them talk, I'm like, I'm immediately looking for a chair. And then, then, then once I sit down, I'm bored. And, uh, and and it sounds like I need to be ready to just kind of sit there and, and, and talk to people yeah. for a while. Um, mm -hmm. And do it for 20 bucks. 20 bucks. I mean, it's half price. So if this is something that you've been interested in, uh, maybe it's time to take the plunge. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get through all the games that I've been, uh, that I'm falling behind on, you know, these horror games and everything else that's happening right now. And then, uh, and then there's some games I need to go back to. I need to re-review Galaxy Cart with all of its updates. Uh, Journey to Foundation is a game I've been wanting to get back to. Uh, and so uh, I doubt that I'll be able to get to it before the sale ends. But I am very curious about it, for sure. Um, uh, I'll point out uh, Last Clockwinder is a very good polished puzzle game. Very good. Uh, for 15 bucks, a uh, pretty good deal there. Yep, I'm only uh, I'm only a couple hours into it, but I'm really liking the polish on that. It's really cool, very interesting, very uh, transpose like gameplay mechanics. I like it. Absolutely, I love Cosmo Dread. Um, Cosmo Dread is twenty percent off, so it means it's only t it's twelve dollars instead of fifteen. Uh, save a little bit more with plus. I mean, dude, if you like roguelites, if you like horror games, uh, that just speaks to me on so many levels. Sirens on my end. Yeah, short but good, Cosmo Drip. Uh, Barbarian's got a bunch of updates, or has had a bunch of updates recently uh, since launch, uh, and it's going for less than fourteen dollars right now instead of twenty. Barbarian is great. You should definitely be playing Barbaria. Yep, never played it, but I've never heard a bad word about it. Like uh, everyone says that this game is amazing. It's like Gordon, but with like content. <laughs> it's crazy. There you go. Yeah. Uh, wow, we're actually coming up to the end because the fourth page is just more D-Day stuff. So this is, this is good. We're making our way. Um, oh, dude, Organ Quarter. Organ Quarter is another game that I need to go pat, fix up that review um, because now it's gotten the updates it needed. Uh, this game, such Silent Hill vibes, very classic uh, survival horror vibes. Uh, if, you, if you grew up with the PS1 generation like I did uh, and you loved the horror games of that era, I feel like this just fits right in there somehow. And uh, and for thirty percent off, seventeen forty nine instead of twenty five. I think it's I think it's great. Yeah, if kind of a retro dated art style doesn't put you off, um, this is one to look into because it's one of those really weird horror games that I, I happen to love. Um, maybe one of the weirdest games I've ever played, but uh, it, it definitely has that retro vibe to it. Not just in the art style, but just in the the general um structure of the game it feels like an old game yeah. uh which is cool for for most people but not for everyone has a little bit of a almost like a tw i don't i don't want to i almost don't want to say it but I, i'm gonna say it anyway it almost has like a twin peaks vibe 
Like it's just the the way that the characters talk, the way that you interact with, you know, the, the way that the story is delivered. Um, I'm sure major Twin Peaks fans are going to like fucking crucify me for saying that, but I do think that that's the kind of vibe that I get from it. Um, yeah, I could see it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go back to page two for a second here, just because I feel like we skipped through some that we didn't need to. No, nope. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to point out uh, another fisherman's tale, uh, which I really enjoyed playing when, oh. when it launched. Uh, and it's like 12 or 13 bucks now. Uh, I think it's worth that. Uh, Waltz of the Wizard, um, you know, it, it's an old title, but it, it's got a big content boost from the PSVR one version. Yes. It's, it's really shockingly high quality in terms of production. Like it's really, really polished and it's eight bucks <laughs> right now. And that's without the extra 15% that you get from, uh, from plus it's like five so bucks like with this, plus. Yeah. 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 It's a $5. Like everyone should go pick that up for five bucks. And did we mention the light brigades on sale? No, which is I, one of the best games in the library. I apologize that that's something we should not have skipped over. The light brigade is fantastic. Save 5% more with plus it's 18 instead of 25. It's so good. I haven't yeah. been back to it, man. I, I, I hate some of these games got past me and I've, I sunk a lot of hours into the light brigade when you and I were talking about it at launch, we did a whole episode about it and it's, it's great, man. It is a great game. It's yeah, yeah, it's great. Great is not an exaggeration. That is a fucking great shooter game. Yeah. And uh highly recommend it. Yeah. I didn't like Dead Hook. Did you like Dead Hook? I, I thought it was okay, man. Like I think the movement's really good in it. Uh, it does kind of the shine wears off after a few hours. Um, it does feel like repetitive after a while. But uh the first few hours I had fun with it. Um so yeah, that's pretty good. I didn't play it on PlayStation. I played it on other platforms, but uh, uh, I did enjoy my time in it um, for the most part. I, I didn't like the crafting stuff, the 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 way the skill tree stuff work, where you like had to put all the different ingredients into. It's just yeah, it was time it was, consuming. It was a bit janky and clunky, yeah. right? Like if it worked perfectly, it would have been fine. Okay. Uh, but it felt like something that after you did it the first time or the second time that there should have just been an automatic button so that you didn't have to go over there and do all that crap. Because I end up dropping stuff and sometimes things weren't work like they were supposed to. Um, so you're right. That was a bit annoying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, so what about it, What the Bat? You like well, that one? 15 bucks? No, fuck What the Bat. <laughs> um... <laughs> I will say, uh, just sorry to go back to Dead Hook, but I will say that Dead Hook has me concerned because Stride Fates just recently got announced for PSVR 2. And I'm excited about that because I even liked, you know, as janky as it was and as blurry as it was on PSVR 1, I liked Stride. I did. I just like liked the gameplay and I loved trying to beat my last uh, record on the endless run mode and all of that stuff. Um, and in seeing how they handled Dead Hook, I was like, man, this is, this is okay, but not great. It's, it's, you know, six out of 10 type feeling. And uh, I was like, I really hope that Stride gets a little bit more love on PSVR 2 than Deadhook did. Um, so that's all I want to say um, about that. Stride Fates is a very different game than Stride. It's completely different. I mean, the movement and stuff is similar, but it's a different type of game. This is a run and gun shooter um, with some decent progression elements to it, but it's very much an action game. Uh, and it's fun. It's good. It kind of feels like a throwback in some ways. Uh, it isn't like super deep or anything like a modern game would be. Um, it's kind of is what you see, right? Like you're you're, you're running, you're jumping, you're shooting. Uh, it has some kind of like over the top arcade style bosses and stuff in it. Uh, but it's good. I, I really enjoyed it. It was better than I expected it to be. Nice. I'm glad to hear that. Um... I'm probably the only one to say this, but I hope they bring Stride proper to PSVR too, because I want to I want to play I want to play this new campaign thing, and I also want to play the old game that uh, that I really enjoyed. But anyway, uh, hey, uh, let me head over here. Lara May VR with the 129 Sekiro's. Uh, we know it's not Sekiro's, but we're never going to stop saying that. Uh, with their first super on a live stream. Uh, 
It says, just want to say I love this channel and I've been following it for years. Best channel ever. That's there's a lot of channels on on uh, on YouTube, so uh, take your time, go explore them, see how you feel about the rest of them, uh, and then come back and let us know if that's still your feeling. Uh, join the Discord now, even though I'm super confused and shy. A lot of us are super confused and shy. <laughs> I'm, I might be more shy and confused than the rest of you. So uh, you're not alone, Lara. Thank you for joining our community. Um, and thank you for the super chat. We appreciate you very much. Yeah, and don't, and don't be shy. When words come into your brain, just put them on the screen. Um, and people will say things back to you. <laughs> so it's cool like that. Is that how it works? <laughs> yeah. She was confused. I had to explain it to her. I'm glad, I'm glad we got that figured out. Uh, Wes, let's not let's let's not brush this thing to the side. We've got uh, a new game that got announced for. I mean, listen, if you check out our news channel over on Discord, quite a few new games got announced for PSVR two while we were in at PAX, uh, and, and they all seem a little bit silly. However, <laughs> today we get the news that Metal Helsing is coming to VR or PlayStation VR two specifically, uh, along with Steam VR. Blah blah blah. No one cares. Um, Dude, are, are you are you familiar with this game? Because uh, I feel like when it got announced, we talked about it for a second, and and we were like, I don't know, somehow this game was in my brain for some reason, and I, and it shouldn't have been for any reason whatsoever. More sirens on my end. Um, you're familiar with this, right? I am because it um, was one of the more notable VR mods that we got last year on PC VR. Um, I didn't I didn't get around to ever trying it out. But this is one of those mods that the community insisted uh, must be nominated for Mod of the Year when we did our year, uh, year end awards. Uh, so I've heard a bunch of great things about this. This is basically, if Doom were a rhythm game, excuse me, that's what Metal Hellsinger is. It's like a Doom-style metal game with a fucking legit soundtrack, by the way, with real um, licensed music in it. And uh, I've I've never played it, but I'm kind of excited to, and uh, I'm happy that uh, this game is getting an official VR version. This just goes to show that modding doesn't necessarily hurt developers. Uh, sometimes it pushes them to do what they should have done all along and bring their damn games to VR. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think this is great news. Um, yeah, so let me let me just bring up the Steam page because the Steam page uh, for the flat screen version, at least, uh, it reveals I think pretty much everything we need to know. Um, so here I'm just gonna blow it up big time here. Uh, so let's see the uh, the the brief synopsis here says Slay to the rhythm of metal and vengeance on a more sirens on my end on an infernal journey through the eight hells. Uh, make them fear the beat. Metal Hell Singer is a rhythm FPS. Bursting with demons, badass weapons, and heavy metal music. Wes, the response on this of uh, recent reviews and all reviews, overwhelmingly positive. Not something you see very often uh, over on Steam. It's like one of the best, uh, it's like the best you could have, right? As far as reviews go. Yeah, that's it. You can't do any better than that. Overwhelmingly positive. Um, and that should just go to show you, man, this, this thing is polished. It is a polished uh, game. Um, and people love it. It's a good uh, good concept. And when you get people praising rhythm games in 2023, um, then that's saying something because most people are sick of rhythm games. So, um, yeah. Uh, this person says literally the best game of all time. <laughs> Just good. Uh, this person says when you first start the game, you'll get chills and your peener will rise. After you complete the game, you'll be <laughs> lying on the floor with your pant wet, wondering how the fuck it's possible to undone your pant with ear stimulation. After that, you will look up the OST on YouTube and add it to your hard playlist. Um, there you go. It's a good um, rundown of the different steps you should expect. Uh, so this is all uh, this is all custom music for uh, for the game, right? From all these uh, from all these legendary. Uh, artists in the metal genre i'm not sure i'm not sure if it's uh custom music or music that's been brought over from uh other places but when i look down the soundtrack for this i get the same feeling that i used to get when a movie would come out that just had an awesome soundtrack like you know the the crow or heavy metal 2000 or some of those great uh soundtracks from the 90s uh this game kind of has the same thing going on with it 
Well, luckily, we have an answer to that question, Wes, uh, right below this whole slew of artists that are pictured here. Um, it says DMCA and copyright information. We fully own the songs as they are specifically written, produced, and performed for the game. For content creators, we have done everything from our side to make sure strikes won't happen. So it does seem nice. like it was all created for the game from, uh, I mean, do you, listen, I'm not going to try to pretend to be somebody I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm the emo dude you'll ever meet on the emo side of things. Um, th are, are all these bands, uh, bands that you recognize, Wes? All right, let me, let me bring it up here so that I can, uh, uh, I can see. Yeah, if you scroll down, uh, there's, there's like an image with all these different artists. We just a moment. I'm on the Steam page now. All right. Don't worry, these cats are patient. It's cool. So, let's see here. Um, Central Hits Pack. Um, I don't know. Awesome. What am I says Lamb of God is huge in the metal world. That was one of the few I really recognized. Obviously, System of a Down um, and Lamb of God were the only two that I recognized. The other ones are completely foreign to me, but you should yeah, be I'm, st I'm still looking for it. I'm on the page here. Where, where the hell is this at? Um, do, 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 do. It's, it's are you on the, VR, on the VR listing or like the regular the listing? The regular listing. Uh, the regular thing right before the system requirements is the very bottom of the description uh, the very bottom of the okay. about this game section um okay I, I didn't click read more that's what i should have done yeah. uh Who soil work i'm not soil work i'm not familiar with ginger i've heard of system of a down i've heard of trivium is fucking awesome uh dark tranquility i don't know uh refused i don't know lamb of god is fucking awesome arch enemy is great and Black Crown Initiate, I do not know. So it's about 50-50. Um, half of these are bands I've heard of, and the other half I have not. Dude, this looks like... Okay, I mean, you, I think you, you already described it well with saying it's a rhythm-based classic Doom type game. However, um, this looks this looks like, when, you know, when people were praising Pistol Whip, and I was like, yeah, yeah, Pistol Whip's really good. Uh, this... This is kind of the the rhythm shooter that I'd rather be playing when it comes to uh, when it comes to rhythm games in VR. You know, like actually with your own full of commotion, jumping, running, shooting. You know, off off of a rail. You know, um, and, right. and it, so I was seeing somebody in our Discord earlier saying you can just turn off the rhythm stuff if you want to. If like you really don't want to get the full experience, like if the rhythm games aren't for you, you can just run around and shoot and play the game without the rhythm stuff. But like. This seems like something I'd be really, really into, uh, and, and and maybe discover, you know, some bands I like in the process. Yep, more silence. Yeah, um, I think it's likely. Uh, Joyway did uh, a pretty good rhythm shooter uh, called Against, and unfortunately, it never really came to other platforms. It just only launched on Steam and Pico, I think. Um, but this looks even better than that because, like you mentioned, all those other rhythm games are on rails, and this one's not. This is kind of uh, open and free, um, which I think is cool. And sure, you you can uh, you can disable the rhythm element from it if you want, but I don't think you really need to. Even if you don't play on rhythm, mm -hmm. um, you don't get too penalized for that. Like I think you get a bonus for being on rhythm, like your attacks are more powerful and potent if you're on beat. But uh, you can just run through this thing and shoot if you want to, and I think it's it'll work just fine. Yeah. This looks like a lot of fun, man. Uh, this this is great. Uh, very unexpected news. Uh, so, and as you said, you know, if, if, this, if this came to us because uh, of the popularity of the mod, then fantastic. Uh, then, then more mods need to happen so that more developers can see uh, the profits that they're missing out on and the, and the potential of their own game. Uh, I think too many developers are too willing to sort of dismiss VR. Uh, and if it takes the modders for them to really understand uh, that their game would work in VR. I've heard, dude, the number of times I've heard people say uh, that you would vomit if you played our game in VR. I said, my response <laughs> is always, I don't think you understand what games we're playing in VR then. Because... We're playing games that are much more intense than your game in VR. Uh, people would love it, we promise.
Yeah, I think a lot of the time, um, the, these studios, um, first of all, they, they they really don't know where to start when it comes to VR development. They don't know uh, if it's something that they can do. They don't know how easy it is to get out there and get help. And they don't really understand how much of a demand that there is uh, for these games to be brought over. So it takes something like like the mod coming out to show them, hey, not only does your game uh, work in VR, but obviously uh, it can be ported over fairly easily uh, by someone who knows what they're doing, and um, and people love it. So uh, yeah, I think it's a great thing and um, something that we're sure to see more of in the uh, coming years. Just want to say, uh, taking a look through the Steam listing. Under Epic Story, it says play through an epic storyline narrated by award-winning actor Troy Baker, which Troy Baker is fucking everywhere. Is this the first time that Troy yeah. Baker has officially come to VR? Because he's been in so many things. I don't want to say that. It seems like he's been in something else, but I don't know. He's been in so much that it would be almost impossible for not him not to already be in a VR game. But if this is the first time that he made it in, to be like, all right, cool. I like Troy. He's all right. Um. Let me see here. I just want to see if anything else really jumps out here. Um, Metal Hellsinger is created by an experienced FPS team at The Outsiders and is the passion project of uh, David Goldfarb, game director on Payday 2 and lead designer on Battlefield 3 and Battlefield Bad Company 2. So pretty decent uh, first-person shooter roots here. Some good pedigree going on. Wes before this becomes a two-hour right. show, which I don't think we can avoid at this point. Um, I think it's time for some 20 questions. What about you? Indeed, sir. It does seem to be that time. Excellent. Well, it's my turn, and I just realized that I haven't picked out a game yet. <laughs> so, um, uh, me... Lone Echo 2. Talk to me. Oh, Troy Baker. Troy Baker was in Lone Echo 2. Damn. All right. All right. Yeah. Everywhere, bro. He's everywhere. <laughs> okay, give me one second. I just want to bring up the store listing here yeah. so I have all the information that I need. And Lone Echo 1, obviously. Um, yeah, I thought it was my turn. So, yeah, take your time there. Oh, did you, you do you have a game picked out? Yeah, actually, I do. Then perfect, because that's going to be way better than what I picked out. Um, I just picked it out in two seconds. So uh, let's do this. Um, guys, you know how this works. We only have six minutes and 20 yes or no questions to figure out what PSVR 1 or PSVR 2 game Wes is thinking of. So please, for the love of God, help me out. Um, my brain is not fully functional today. As I, At this point, I think we should just get used to it not being fully functional any day. That's a thing. All right, here we go. Guys, help me out. On your mark, get Dez, go. Man, I, I, I get so bored with my own questions, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the tried and true. Uh, is this game on PSVR 2? Yes. Was it also on PSVR 1? Yes. Okay. Uh, damn. Okay. Was it a launch title on PSVR 2? Hmm. I think so. Give me just a minute. I'll confirm. Don't, yeah, don't, By the way, I never finished. I, I was still scrolling Troy Baker's resume when you asked me that. It's just so fucking long. Um, <laughs> give me just a minute here and I'll tell Which games you. have you been in? Oh, every. <laughs> right. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, We're going to have to ignore the timer a say, little bit. Yeah, yeah, this was a launch title. Okay. Wait, um, wait. yes, <laughs> yes, launch title. Okay, launch okay. title on PSVR 2. Um, it's a remaster from a PSVR 1 game. Uh, has this developer made other PSVR 2 games? Yes. Are there any third person elements in this game? No, 
That's five. Okay. I had to get um had to get moss out of my head. Uh oh, Headbite says Life Brigade. That's interesting. Uh because it did come to PSVR one, I think, right? It was supposed to, but I just don't remember it ever actually happening. Um Uh, Markio says, "Did we talk about it today? Let's 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 specify that. Was it was it a sale game? Yes. Okay. Uh, was it published by Vertigo? Yes. Okay. So that narrows it down to oh god. Okay, you guys. Um, let's see, Vertigo Games." Uh, this this could uh, this game have teleportation only as a locomotion mechanic? No. Okay, that, that eliminates a uh, fisherman's tail then. Um, and another fisherman's tail didn't come to uh, PSVR one, so that eliminates those published by Vertigo. Um, is this multiplayer focused? It is. Okay. Do you kill Snowbreed in this game? You do. Is this it's after dead. the fall? <laughs> it is after the fall, Brian. Um, did Virgo have another launch title? Because like uh, Fisherman's Tale wasn't a launch title. I I just um, I just can't remember when some of these games made their way yeah. over. So okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Very good. Well done. Got that quicker than I expected. Thank you. Uh, it's just funny because the game that I had picked out <laughs> was also a Vertigo title, and it was uh, it was Arizona Sunshine One. So I, I'm betting you probably would have gotten there just as, if not faster. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, don't I worry. Don't know. Sometimes the most obvious ones are the ones that we miss. Yeah. Don't worry, Wes. I'll use that for you next week. You won't even see it coming because right. I already told you what it was. Probably not. Excellent. Not. Yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you, everybody, for being here and, and for hanging out with us for this uh, for this nice long episode uh, of PSVR Games Cast Live. Uh, we appreciate you uh, more than we ever have before. Um, somehow, my love of the community grows and grows with each passing day and with each passing PAX. <laughs> um, make sure you guys subscribe to uh, Wes over at Virtual Strangers. Wes, what's going on over there this week? Um, you guys are back up and running. What's happening? Indeed. Uh, so I plan to be back on the air Friday. We missed last week, obviously, because I was in Boston. Um, but Boston. we're coming back this Friday with some uh, gameplay um, impressions. Uh, we're going to have some deeper impressions of Overdark. Uh, we're going to talk about Max Mustard. Woo! And fingers crossed, uh, we're going to talk about Madison. And we may even... Uh, do some live gameplay of one of those, probably Madison, uh, because it seems like if we get a keys for it, it's going to be really late in the game. So, um, yeah, so we're going we're to do impressions of Overdark and Max Mustard, and then probably uh, run some live first impressions of Madison during the episode as well. Awesome. Very, very awesome. Man, it's going to be a great week. Um, can't, dude, just can't believe all the horror that's happening. You know, we just got Happy Funland last week. Yeah, it didn't turn out great, but you know, it, we have it. Uh, I still, I still, I still refuse to believe that that's as bad as you guys say it is. Yeah, like I'm, I'm hoping it's one of these things like Twilight Zone, where you said it has its redeeming points. It's just not worth going through the other stuff to get to it. I, I disagree. Like for me, Twilight Zone, the cool stuff is worth going through the crap for. Okay, and I'm hoping that's going to be the case with uh, Happy Funland as well. With Happy Funland, I, I did say in my review, and so my review kind of like, I feel like my opinion is all over the place because I do think that the last 30 minutes might actually be worth playing through the game for. And and people, there are there's there's support for this game in, in the sense that like people who love Disney are kind of going to bat for it, being like, oh, if you like Disney and you like are familiar with the park and all the different rides, you're going to love the parody that's going on here, the satire uh, that each ride is, you know, reminiscent of a specific disney ride and like they make fun of it in like such great ways and uh i didn't find that i'm not a disney person i haven't been to the park since i was seven and uh and and the humor didn't land with me right so there i when people say oh this is you know th there's there's redeeming qualities here and you should definitely check it out um someone even called it a diamond in the rough which i think is an aladdin reference um <laughs> so disney 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 um 
I fucking mad respect to people who are like enjoying this game for reasons that I won't. Um, you know, I'm glad I'm glad it found an audience somehow. Now I hope the patches come through, and so uh, people who aren't that very specific audience will also be able to appreciate it the way that these these people are. And so, uh, very much looking forward to hearing your impressions about it, Wes. Um, I guess. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm just hoping it gets uh, smooth turning. Like that's kind of the thing I'm waiting on. Like, uh, if it gives me that, I'll go in and, and check it out fairly quickly. Uh, so hopefully, we won't have to wait very long on that. <laughs> Tiffany corrects my score on Happy Funland. It's technically a four point five now that we've shifted the entire scale by point <laughs> five. Um, guys, thank you so much for being here. Make sure you go subscribe to West Dylan and his non uh, non ag- no no ag- VR agnostic. I was going to say non don't know what's going on uh they cover all vr over there go subscribe to his channel they're fucking awesome um and uh especially if you like long form content put them on you know make cook some dinner take a nap they're just very relaxing to listen to i i I love having you guys on in the background thank you for existing wes and friends um so go subscribe to them make sure uh you guys uh consider supporting us on patreon.com slash without pearl games i swear to you at some point there's going to be patreon content i think we're going to kick it off with a legendary tales interview uh from the uh from pax and uh and then i'll get some uh some of those live streams i promised uh, up over the next couple weeks uh don't forget to, you can be a member over here and get those free super chats. Uh, what else? Thanks to everybody who tips during the show. You guys keep the lights on. We appreciate you so much. And thanks to everybody who sits back and watches the show and doesn't say a goddamn word. We know you're out there. And we love you just as much. Happy Wednesday, Wes. Happy Wednesday, Brian. Happy Wednesday, cats. See you in a couple days. <laughs> Mark with the $10 tip says, <laughs> I didn't even see this. The flat screen version of Hel- Hellsinger is awesome. Depending on if you shoot the gun at the right time, the music changes. Once you shoot at the right time, you get into a trance. 10 out of 10 game. Wow. That's really promising. Now, Mark. can you imagine, see, see, we've had other games like this, right? Where you, what you do uh, affects the, the music and Tetris effect comes to mind right off the top. Uh, and when Tetris Effect came to PSVR 2, the addition of the haptics even enhanced that further. Um, I'm hoping something similar happens here with Metal Hellsinger. Oh, yeah, man. Absolutely. Uh, I'm also curious to know, like, you know, I'm not like a huge metal fan. Like, I've got my my, my picks and uh, songs that I love, right? But like, if you like uh, top three genres, top four or five genres, maybe even uh, of music that you like, I don't think metal would, would make it, you know, like very metal adjacent i guess right like emo and punk and note to and self rock make brian a playlist Ooh. i can convert you brian yeah you can i mean dude if you can convert me like god knows my parents would be thrilled 